Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for coming on board. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about the Kingdom Sheet for Oathmark and some of the things in the rulebook. Hello everyone, I hope everyone is well. Uh, very busy this week. Um, we are gearing up for Oathmark, our next game of the week. And uh, it's going to be a while still uh, until Julie and I can kind of get ready for it, you know, for an actual game, an actual battle report for this game and, you know, dedicate the week to it, uh, just like we did with Vanguard. Um, it, Oathmark is a very, it's a very interesting rule set. And for those of you that already have the core rules, you know that one of the things that's most unique about the game is the Kingdom Sheet. And... Uh, in this video, I, I think I'm going to spend more time on this because this is what really makes the game unique. And, you know, we'll talk about the roster sheet, the roster sheet's there. And then uh, I will have a couple a couple of websites uh, for you guys in the description. Um, first and foremost, the Osprey website where you can print these, okay? And they're printer friendly. And, uh, you know, you can... Go there on your own time and check them out. And uh, if I have another resource for you, I'll put it in the description. Okay, so check the descriptions from time to time in my videos because I do update them. And a lot of times uh, what I'm doing now is uh, linking all my videos that are related to each other. You know, so there'll be little links on the description. Or uh, if there's something interesting I found, you know, I'll like put it in the description as a link so you guys can check it out. So... Uh, I'm going to do that for this video. But anyway, so Julia and I are going to be working on our kingdom sheets, and that determines your armies for Oathmark. Uh, but it's going to be a while still because I have a lot of models to paint. We're, she's helping me to put some models together. I'm uh, checking the studio budget, and hopefully I can squeeze out another box of Oathmark, maybe dwarf troops or something that we need for our armies because even with my very large collection i don't have all the things to properly uh display all of the armies now remember you can use any miniatures you want in oathmark it's in the rules but they do have this miniatures line you know and it it makes it easy because as you're going to see in just a minute you can play with one box of miniatures one box is 30 troops in infantry terms and so one box of miniatures can kind of get you started and then later on you start to add stuff you know to uh, make things more interesting let's go to the tabletop now and check out the kingdom sheet and the rule okay <clears throat> and uh, i'm really sorry guys my copy of oathmark is on my kindle and so it is a digital uh, version so uh, uh i hope that you know, the video comes out okay. Um, all right, so these are the table of contents in the book. So I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of the book. Then we're moving on to the kingdom sheet. And it's organized pretty much the same way as uh, a lot of uh, this author's rules. Uh, it's good good flow, good to read, uh, explanations, a lot of explanations. So that's really good. And you'll also see some nice artwork throughout the book. So we're going to skip through some of this stuff. Um let me actually go back for a minute. I just want to. So you do, uh, it, it gives you a what you need section with the miniatures, what kind of miniatures, and then the table, terrain. Um, and one of the very unique things about this rule is how it uses uh, fantasy races. Uh, you know, it's not your typical evil goblins, evil orcs, you know, fighting against humans or elves, whatever. Um, the distinction is not in, as clear that way. You can use goblins and elves together in an army, you know, as you're going to see in a minute. You can see you use orcs and, and humans and maybe dwarves, elves and humans or whatever it is. Um, so it's very unique that way in that the fantasy tropes don't really dictate you know, good or evil, you know, in, in many fantasy games, that's what you get. Um, so we're going to go uh, to playing the game and we'll just check out unit sizes. Um, this game is uh, here. They give you the bases. So 25 by 25 millimeters, kind of your standard 
uh, bases for figures and then uh, it is played as a rank and file game so you know you can either make your own uh, trays to put your figures on for rank and file or you can you know get them online uh, so I usually make my own and then cavalry is mounted on 25 by 50 those are the nice little rectangular bases okay so that's kind of just giving you information on the unit sizes and then it goes to larger monsters you can also have mixed units such as artillery and they contain figures of different base sizes so there are specific rules for that and that's pretty cool now one of the key things that i wanted to uh just mention when you put your kits together your boxes like i'm doing with my goblin riders it might be a good idea to kind of skim over the rules skim over the book just to see what the rules are for, you know, weapon types and whatever. Um, there is an officer that will be placed in your tray. And that's where you're going to be um, doing line of sight. You're going to base your facings. This, this game does have arcs. So like front arc, rear arc, you know, flanks. Gives it a little more detail. And yes, when uh, units are attacked, here are the arcs I just talked about. Units are attacked from different areas. They may get uh, bonuses. The attacker gets bonuses. So, you know, uh, but that little officer is is pivotal because you're going to do your line of sight through him. And um, you're also going to check other things. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Maybe there's a figure you paint differently. Maybe you um, have a figure that's converted, a special conversion or whatever. And here they go into line of sight. Okay. And there it is. You know, there's a the little diagram. So the book has a, a lot of good diagrams and it gives you rules on like uh, setting up the uh, your little trays. And here's the line of sight cones, you know, from the officers. And also the officers are always in the middle, it seems. And maybe it could be a banner man or something, but something that you know that you can tell right away. Right. OK, so I want to spend a little bit of time uh, with the kingdom sheet because it is a really critical part of the game. It's actually a very unique part of this game. So uh, here in the center, that's going to be your capital. That's going to define the rulers of your kingdom. I decided on goblin. So that means, you know, my goblin, my king is going to be a goblin, basically. And um, this will also yield... For example, prince, you know, uh, a princess or whatever it is. Basically, your higher hierarchy that, that are going to be the rulers of your kingdom. So capital city comes first. So you choose a, a capital city. And then you have these other circles coming out of your uh, kingdom here. And so uh, it's number two, number three, number four. You're not going to do anything with number five because that's reserved for another purpose. So you're going to fill in these regions with terrain, right? And uh, the second ring here has two regions, two slots for you to fill in. And then uh, this third one has three slots, three, ter three regions that you can use for terrain. And the last one has four regions. And these are the, the borders of your kingdom. And these regions, the, the terrain that you're going to add into these regions will determine the types of troops that your kingdom can muster for its army. It's a very uh, kind of um, fascinating uh, technique, you know, me mechanic. So uh, we're going to look very quickly... Uh, because there are some rules for the kinds of terrain that you're going to use and how many. So let me just uh, get your attention to this uh, table here. And this is for the dwarf faction. They are organized by factions like dwarves, uh, elves, humans. And so here we see that the dwarf city and there's a little one. This is the rarity of this kind of terrain. Likewise, you see forges, rarity, Two, okay, and mountain passes also rarity two. Now, if you look here, this is going to tell you how many units and what kinds of units can come out of a dwarf city. So, if it's your capital, you can have one dwarf king or a dwarf prince, right? Uh, a dwarf general, you can only have one of in your army, 
and he does come out of a city, right? Or you can have two dwarf captains, etc. You can have unlimited number of dwarf spearmen, but your points values are going to kind of determine how many of these spearmen you can actually get. We're still playing with points to purchase your units. It's just that this whole system, this kingdom system, defines the kinds of things that you can put into your army. So, going back to this example, uh, I have a goblin capital city. Here in this circle, you can put any terrain type of rarity 2 or rarity 1. So, if I want to, I can add a forge here. It give me access to a dwarf champion, and here I add a dwarf city, which will give me uh, access to like some spearmen, archers, whatever. If I want to add dwarves to my co goblin kingdom, or I can add anything else. It could be an elf city, it could be a human city, whatever it is. But you have to go by these sort of uh, little numbers, and I numbered the rings to make it easier, and then you use the rarity of that terrain to determine how many terrain types you can put in your kingdom. Now, as you get to these outer uh, territories, you're going to be able to add more terrains of the different types. So this is your uh, roster sheet, right? And this is an army roster sheet. And uh, once you're done with, um, with your kingdom, right? Once you have all your kingdom, all your territories, you know what kinds of units you can muster. Well, you're going to use the points that you agree on with your opponent. Let's say it's 550 points. Well, that's going to be a basic game. It's your limit. So uh, 550 points, you're going to go into your kingdom and look around and then kind of muster an army. And that's going to be your limit, 550 points. That usually equals like a, a box of troops, dirty troops. And so uh, and then you have like 100 points left over to do whatever. Um, and depending on what units you choose, right? So that's like any other war game. And uh, the cool thing is that scenarios are going to dictate whether you're an attacker or defender, um, and they're going to dictate where in your opponent's kingdom you're going to be fighting. So whatever terrain. And so um, if you win that game, you're going to win that territory which gives you access to their troops. And you're going to document that on this fifth outer ring. And your opponent's going to document, well, which of their territories is occupied. As you begin losing territories, if you get your capital city occupied by your opponent, you lose the campaign, the kingdom falls apart, and that's it. Okay, and to summarize, um, the core rulebook is divided into two sections. Basic rules, advanced rules, you uh, can choose if you really just want to learn the rules a little bit. You know, first, you stick with the basic section of the book. If you just want to jump, jump right in to the advanced section, whatever it is, you go to the advanced section of the book. And that's where you will find the kingdom uh, sheet and everything that you need to do your kingdom. So that's the first thing you're going to do is create your kingdom. Then you're going to create your armies. You're going to agree on a point value for your first game. You know, what scenario, all that stuff. And then you create your armies. And then uh, you have at it. And whoever wins, obviously, uh, the scenario is going to dictate what territory you're going to occupy in your opponent's kingdom. Fascinating. McCullough, he never disappoints. With us, he never disappoints, really. A very interesting system. And remember, guys, it's a free system. So it's free in the sense that uh, it allows you a lot of flexibility, right? Not that it's a free game. It's a free system in that if you don't want to play uh, with the uh, Kingdom Sheet, you can just have a regular match and just say, all right, you know, we're learning. Let's get some points together. Have it at it. And that's it. Okay, you can play that way or you can add the whole campaign thing to make things more narrative, more interesting. And it really does inspire some stories. As I'm sitting there adding territories, I'm thinking all these stories that I could use for my kingdom, right? So um, don't miss the next uh, M and J chat, Martin and Julie chat. 
we're going to be uh, having a little segment dedicated to the Kingdom Sheet. We're going to have it all filled out and give you an example of where we're going with it. Thank you so much, folks, and I'm sorry if this video is a little longer than usual. We'll talk very soon.